our special show, Living Long and Healthy with COVID vaccination. As India is in the grip of the second wave of the pandemic, the only way we can defeat this disease is through vaccinations. Only if more and more people are vaccinated will the virus circulation in this population go down. Now, on the show, we'll try and address any concerns, any questions that many of you have regarding the vaccinations. And to answer all your questions, we have on the show with us Dr. T.S. Clare, Chairman Fortis Heart and Vascular Institute at Fortis Hospital, Guru Gram. Uh, Dr. Raman Chavla, uh, Managing Director and Chief Cardiologist, CareMax, who Super Speciality Hospital, Jalandhar. And Dr. Harinder K. Bali, Chairman in Cardiac Sciences at Paras Hospital in Panchkula. Thank you so much, doctors, for sparing your time and, you know, uh, joining us on the show so you can answer these questions that people have regarding the vaccinations. And Dr. Claire, I'd like to start first with you. What explains the second wave of infections that we're currently seeing? Uh, I would think the couple of factors which are important for the second wave is that uh, uh, at the end of uh, December, January, uh, the number of cases had started dipping too low and uh, I think the first February recorded the least number of cases in India. Everybody thought that the pandemic is now off uh, the hook and uh, the public, uh, the even the healthcare professionals and the policy makers, everybody thought and conceptualized that we are uh, behind the pandemic which was I think a fundamental uh, uh, mistake. And a lot of liberalization occurred in terms of movement. Parties started appearing again, and people started getting marriages. And then, you know, the uh, Kumbh Mela was allowed, and the rallies in the election uh, uh, in various states. I think all these uh, uh, factors combined uh, did the damage. And also, uh, another factor was the uh, occurrence of variants. These variants, uh, they came perhaps from outside, like one of the uh, variants came from UK. This was because the international travel was uh, allowed again. So combining all these factors, uh, I think the, uh, the second surge is there to us. See, unless we are, the majority of the population, around 80-85% are vaccinated, uh, we should not, we cannot uh, uh, rest, uh, you know, uh, offload the precautions uh, uh, which are needed to prevent the uh, epidemic. Dr. Raman Chavla, one of the questions that many people and one of the doubts that they have regarding the vaccines mm -hmm. are whether these vaccines that we have are effective against these variants where they're described as, you know, mutations. We have a, a double mutated virus. We have the UK variant, uh, various variants uh, circulating right now. See, it is uh, very difficult to give you final verdict on this, either yes or no. We can discuss that it is definitely possible that there's at least some protection against the new variants also. But more importantly, they are effective in preventing serious illness caused by these variants. So it means definite serious illness is prevented. But to say it is totally preventing even the infection or the effect is not possible to comment. Now as far as COVID shield vaccine is concerned, we have data from cellular and microbiological studies, this says that it definitely offer protection from the double, double mutant variants also. This co-vaccine as depicted by Indian Council of Medical Research, it says that it also protects. But a long way to go before we finally tell population that this is effective. But till now, we presume this may not be, this is definitely effective in preventing serious illnesses. So you cannot say that it is effective 100% in preventing the disease caused by these variants. Right. Uh, Dr. Bali, you know, you know, we were just speaking about the, the, the single uh, mute variant, the, the Kent variant. You have the double mutation also. Now we're even hearing about a triple mutation, which uh, some in the media are calling uh, the Bengal variant. But I, I don't think all doctors approve of that. But do describe to us, for our viewers, what, what it means uh, about these uh, double mutation uh, variants that are now circulating. See, the, basically the virus is an RNA virus and it has a genomic sequence. And the first virus which was isolated in Wuhan when the pandemic started and also in U.S. when the cases reached U.S., that had a particular genomic uh, sequence. 
And when this genomic sequence gets altered because the virus tries to mutate to survive against, uh, and that happens all the time. And when it uh, that genomic sequence gets altered, that mutation uh, takes place. Some of these mutations are not very important uh, from clinical point of view or from uh, uh, infectious disease study point of view because they do not change the character of the virus. But there have been variants which started from UK, what we call the UK variant, then the Brazil variant, then South African variant. And now we see that there's a double variant and there are uh, two uh, sites of mutations have occurred. And in Punjab, if you see, uh, in a study, it was seen that 85% of isolate from new infection were of, of double uh, variants. And now we see triple uh, variant, uh, triple mutation as well. So what, what basically it means that the genomic uh, sequence uh, of the R RNA, and uh, we have a genomic sequence, and then we have the spike protein. There is a change in the uh, uh, genome of the virus. And uh, now what we are seeing, it is uh, more infectious, is uh, contrary to what we saw in the earlier uh, wave. It is affecting younger population also, even children also. That what the test we do normally, RT-PCR, uh, that also detects a particular genomic uh, sequence. And there are a number of tests which we do. Some of these tests only test one part of the genomic sequence. And those tests may not be remain positive if mutation has occurred in those genomic uh, sequences. But there are other tests which test multiple sites, and they would remain positive. So I think the RT-PCR, which we are doing in most of the centers, are testing multiple centers, multiple sites of this virus. So the, the positivity would, would remain same, but the infectiousness has certainly increased. Uh, Dr. Chavla, if you could please explain about, you know, inf we're, we're waiting for more vaccines right now. If you could explain about the Sputnik vaccine. See Basically, this is built by the Gamalia Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology, Russia. And India approved it for its emergency use on 12th of April 2021 and will be produced and distributed in India with the help of Dr. Reddy's laboratories. It's basically a viral vector vaccine based on adenovirus, which is similar to COVID virus. Schedule of this virus is practically going to be the same, that it is required as half ml intramuscular to be given, with the gap of about 21 days. In addition, its efficacy is going to be 91%. The biggest advantage of this vaccine is that this comes in two forms, either in liquid or powder form. The powder form can be stored in a routine temperature of refrigerator, which is 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. That's the biggest advantage of storing this vaccine. So this vaccine does not degenerate as the time passes. Another biggest advantage of this is, till now, there has been no documented hypersensitive reaction to this vaccine. Now the question remains the same, that will this vaccine is going to be effective against uh, COVID variant, double variants or not? That has not yet been documented. Let's see how this vaccine is being uh, effective against these variants. But as far as, uh, again, routine virus, which has not been mutated, the efficacy is to the tune of 91%. And this is a great advantage that India has approved it so that a vaccine is available easily and more and more population can get vaccinated. And once the more and more population can get vaccinated, Obviously, you get herd immunity, then spread of virus definitely dies down. Now, Dr. Bali, uh, you know, we have been seeing a lot of vaccine hesitancy and we want to address any concerns that people have, especially the elderly population as they go ahead and, you know, they've been getting vaccinated. Is the vaccines, are they safe for patients with long-term heart disease? And should people do a CRP test before going ahead with the vaccine? I think it is a cause of concern that there is a lot of uh, uh, vaccine hesitancy in our population. I would like to say uh, that vaccines are safe. We have large uh, studies on uh, COVID and uh, reasonably large studies on Covaxin also. Similarly, any vac vaccine which comes into public domain and is approved by the uh, authorities, uh, be it FDA in the US or our regulatory body, that uh, studies the data which is available. And I would like to assure 
that the vaccines which are available in India and Sputnik also, which is going to be available as Dr. Raman was mentioning about shortly. Similarly, Johnson vaccines, all of these vaccines and in US Moderna and Pfizer vaccines have been found to be safe and effective. Efficacy ranges from, uh, say, anything between 70 percent to 94, 95 percent. But they are very, very safe. And we have no uh, uh, vaccinated more than 12 crore people in our uh, population. And we have uh, experience to say that in a large majority of patients, uh, people, uh, normal people, uh, when they are vaccinated, it produces no symptoms or the symptoms are extremely mild. There may be some myalgia, a fever for a day or two uh, and nothing more than that. And there are very, very rare cases, 0.003%, which in Europe have been found to have uh, clot formation because of COVID shield, and that is extremely low. And uh, there is a mechanism, immunological mechanism, which uh, uh, causes that. But that is so low when we compare to the normal uh, thrombotic episodes which we see in a uh, normal population or we even compare with thrombotic complication which are seeing in, in infection because of COVID virus, this is extremely minuscule and is negligible. So I think people must come forward and they should take uh, the vaccination uh, without any hesitancy. And that is that will be the cornerstone of our fight against pandemic. Coming to heart patients, there are a number of people who have heart disease. Uh, they, they range from hypertension to coronary artery disease to acute coronary syndrome and heart attacks and uh, heart uh, patients who have heart failure. Now, in a large majority of these patients, these vaccines can be taken very safely and effectively. We advise our patients that they should take these vaccines without any hesitancy if they have stable coronary artery disease or if they have hypertension or diabetes, there is obviously no problem. But even when they have a stable coronary artery disease or they have undergone angioplasty or bypass, they can take this vaccine very safely. Uh, some of our colleagues have recommended getting uh, XCRP done, uh, high sensitivity CRP done before taking vaccination. We do not agree with you. A large majority of cardiologists would not agree with you. It has created more confusion in the minds of people. And I don't think there is any need to get uh, CRP done before getting vaccinated. All right. Uh, thank you so much, you know, for uh, clarifying that and, and uh, reassuring people uh, that they should go ahead and we you know, really need to get ahead of this vaccine hesitancy that we're seeing in the country. We'll slip into a short break now and return with more of the questions and doubts that you may have uh, regarding the vaccine. Welcome back to our special show, Living Long and Healthy with COVID Vaccination, where we're trying to answer all your questions, any queries, anything that you may want to know about the vaccination process and why it's so important that each one of us gets vaccinated, because that's the only way we're going to defeat this pandemic. Uh, Dr. Raman Chavla, I'd like to go across to you now. Why should people with heart disease who've had a heart attack or stroke get the COVID vaccination? See, there are two ways of looking at it. One, people who have heart attack or stroke, they're already at high risk of disease as such as compared to general population who doesn't have this problem. Number one is this. Second is they're already aging process. They're already aged population who have this problem. And we know this COVID virus is much more dangerous in a population who is aging. So it means these patients must be protected irrespective of heart disease as such because of the aging factor as such. This is one way of looking at it. So second point is, why do people get heart attack? It's basically blood is thick. The cells in the blood which causes clot, they are very hyperactive. So it means they have more chances as such to form clot or clogging of the vessels which supply blood to the brain or to the heart. Now, we know that disease process of this virus is basically related to increased cell activity, which causes clot formation in all the vessels of the body. So in one aspect, we are saying that these people as such are more prone to clot formation in the blood vessels. Now, the virus itself causes more clot formation in the blood vessels. So when these things are combined together, 
these patients are really, really at high risk. That is why these patients must be vaccinated on priority as was decided by government of India. All right. Yes, that's the point we want to emphasize on this show. Uh, Dr. Claire, the next question to you. Uh, do blood pressure lowering or lipid lowering medications affect the vaccine? Should people take their prescribed uh, medi medicines on the day that they're getting vaccinated? First of all, vaccine is very safe for anybody, you know, irrespective of his age, his sex and his uh, comorbidities, uh, the vaccine is very safe. Uh, the vaccine cannot cause COVID because there is no live virus in the in the vaccine. It is the messenger RNA and it cannot cause the COVID. So number one. Number two, patients who have heart disease, they had bypass surgery or they had an angioplasty or they are on blood thinners. Even people who are on uh, uh, strong blood thinners like uh, uh, acetrome or warfarin or patient had a valve surgery, it is very safe to give vaccine in those patients. This is an intramuscular, very small needle. It will not cause any hematoma in general. So they should not be worried about that. Right. Dr. Bali, uh, is the vaccination safe for people who have undergone a bypass surgery? Yes, absolutely. Patients who have undergone bypass surgery and have been stable after bypass surgery, there is absolutely no problem in getting vaccination. After bypass surgery, what we need to say, how symptomatic a patient is. And the large majority of patients who remain asymptomatic after bypass surgery for years together. In those people, there is no problem. They can go ahead and get their vaccination done. There can be patients who have heart muscle weakness years after bypass surgery. And there can be patients who may have recurrence of disease after bypass surgery. These patients are few and they should seek their uh, medical advice from their treating cardiologist to see that they are safe to undergo bypass surgery. The basic line is that all those patients of heart disease, including those who have undergone bypass surgery and have stable or what we call as a chronic coronary artery disease, they, there is absolutely no problem in them taking a vaccine. Many of them are on blood thinners, we don't recommend that they stop their blood thinners. They should continue to take all their medicines. Only those patients who are on anticoagulants and their INR, we monitor, monitor the uh, thinness of the blood by a test which we call as the INR. And if the INR is more than 2.5 or 3, they need to stop that uh, medicine for a day or two. When the INR is less than 2.5 or preferably less than 2, they can take their vaccination. They do not need to take any other precaution. All right. Well, thanks uh, for that, doctor. And uh, now next question to Dr. T.S. Claire. Uh, does one need to wear a mask and avoid close contact with others if they've received both doses of the vaccine? See, people who have got two doses of vaccine or even people who had had uh, COVID themselves, uh, they still need to uh, wear a mask. I tell you why. Uh, because even if you have a, a vaccine, you can still be uh, carrying the virus because virus is not going to is not infecting you because of the immunity, but still you may be carrying the virus in your nose and your uh, uh, secretion, so which you can give to others. So it is important to wear mask in public and also maintain the uh, a proper distance of two yards uh, if we want to uh, prevent the spread of the uh, uh, virus to others. Well, thank you so much, doctors, for joining us on the show. And I'm sure it's been very helpful to a lot of people, you know, who have questions around the vaccination process. Uh, but the uh, main uh, message of this entire show is that people need to go ahead and get vaccinated if we're to end this pandemic. Thanks so much for sparing your time. Uh, goodbye. Thanks for watching the show.